thinking about moving to Knoxville, but are curious about West Knoxville. Does it really live up to the hype? Is it really a place you should consider? Let's drive around. Let's go check it out. Okay, so what is West Knoxville? So for the purposes of this video, you'll see behind me is the I-40, I-75 paper mill exit. So essentially everything from this exit, paper mill North Shore West is what we're gonna be talking about in West Knoxville. Now, some people would argue that it's a little further, like closer into downtown, but for the purposes of this, again, we're gonna go paper mill, which is this exit behind me and everything west. So let's drive around, let's go see. Okay, so we are at West Hills Bearden. We're right on that edge, right just past the paper mill exit, heading west away from downtown. So the first place that I want to point out to you is where the Whole Foods is, the REI, there's an Ulta. There's another Ulta over in Turkey Creek, so on the far side of West Knoxville, but this is our sole Whole Foods here in Knoxville. So basically on the opposite side of this shopping center is what we call Bearden Hill. So that's kind of, again, the beginning of West and moving like away from downtown. So the beginning of West Knoxville, moving away from downtown. And in terms of neighborhoods, so essentially behind us so this road right here this is called kingston pike so that's like our major road and for the most part it runs parallel to i-40 so behind me over here that's kingston pike and if i keep going over this way that's i-40 so i-40 i-75 is our huge interstate but if you want to get off the interstate and you want to go to knoxville you can take kingston pike so essentially if we go to that side of kingston pike that's an area called dean hill really nice houses think 1970s 1980s a lot of them have been renovated updated like huge ranchers huge basement ranchers super cool and then on the other side of 40 like across the interstate that is west hills so west hills in my mind you may have heard me say this is kind of like where chip and joanna Gaines would buy some of the like nicest houses cutest houses so anyways that is a little bit of kind of the bearden west hills area and kind of the first stop when it comes to west knoxville this area, as you can probably tell, is where you're gonna have boutique restaurants, boutique gyms, think like cycle bar, hot yoga, stuff like that. So this is an area called Dean Hill. Um, as you can see, like super quaint, really huge yards these are older homes here's an updated like basement rancher just really nice so for the most part you have older homes that have been updated there is like this house right here um i've actually did a tuesday tour of this house this is a brand new construction house it's like two years old but for the most part you're gonna see older homes big yards lots of trees Dean Hill is partially on the Dogwood Trail. So just for context, that means like the yards are on point. You've got, it's beautiful in the spring. It's just like a super nice area. So minimum to get into this neighborhood is gonna be around 500,000. This house, check this out, this rancher, so good. Um, it's gorgeous. So that is Dean Hill. And again, on the back side of Dean Hill, you have a lot of houses that have mountain views. Um, and then you can also see like, okay, this guy is a little bit dated, this green roof dated. So you do have a mix of old and new, and then you will have investors that come here, um, but they are like high dollar investors who might buy for 500 and then list for like 700, 800. Um, I think I've even looked at a house in here for like a million dollars. So anyways, this is Dean Hill. It's a super nice neighborhood um, on kind of the east end of West Knoxville. All right, so we are in Dean Hill, which is one of Knoxville's kind of, it's not necessarily historic, but it does have a lot of history behind it. So in Dean Hill, you're gonna see like gorgeous basement ranchers. You're gonna see 
oversized split foyers and you're gonna see huge, huge, huge yards. Also note that part of Dean Hill is on the Dogwood Trail. So like you see these pink strips on the road. That means in the spring, it is super gorgeous. It's beautiful. So Dean Hill, this is one of my favorite neighborhoods just because it's so, I don't know, I just love it. It's like, I feel like everything in Dean Hill is amplified. Like the yards are like zoomed big. The houses, even this, the typical ranchers are oversized. So you will see investors come here um, into this area, but typically an investor might purchase a house as an example for 500,000. And once it's redone, they could sell it for 800, even $900,000. Um, I think there's actually a listing right now that is for a million. Um, so anyways, definitely a great area. It's definitely in terms of location, it's super convenient because you're so close to downtown, but you're also close to Bearden, West Town Mall, West Hills, um, and you can easily get out to Turkey Creek by way of Kingston Pike or I-40. I'm here with Shay Jones, also known as my husband. And basically, we interrupt this West, West Knoxville blog because I wanted to get his opinion on West Knoxville. You can just speak truthfully. Just tell the truth now. Okay, seriously, I want to know your true opinion on West Knoxville. Um, okay, the first thing that comes to mind is traffic. <laughs> okay. So that's a negative. Okay. The thing that comes to mind is <laughs> shopping. We have a so neighbor screaming at us. You can actually buy some clothes, stuff like that, rather. You know, then living in Seymour. If you were going to go shopping in West Knoxville, where would you go? Well, I'm not familiar with all this. Oh my so, God. Turkey Creek. Okay. Oh, West, uh, West Town Mall. It's the only things I know. He doesn't even like West Town Mall, do you? No, but I'm saying I got options. I got to get some shoes. Oh. Like this weekend. <laughs> oh, so you said traffic, you said uh, shopping. Food. You got food options. Now, whenever you say, like, well, she grew up in West Knoxville in reference to me. Why do you say that? Like you say it like I'm snooty. You're snooty. <laughs> so, I mean, overall scale of one to 10, how would you rate West Knoxville? I'm fine with it. Okay, so you'd live there. Mm, there might be in one little pocket somewhere away from everybody that I live. But I don't know where they sat out there. So I'm sure you know. I don't know. <laughs> Somebody knows. Well, over Seymour, what would you say? West Knoxville or Seymour? Sorry, Seymour Villian. <laughs> there's just nothing there anymore. <laughs> well, anymore, there's never been nothing there. And we've gave it, gave it, gave it, did it. Years. Years. Well, there you go. All right, let's continue our West Knoxville exploration. Thank you, sir. What's up? Okay, we are at the far like south end of West Knoxville. So this is North Shore, North Shore and Pellissippi. So kind of past North Shore, you're getting towards Blount County, you're getting towards Louisville. So North Shore, I would say, is the very back end of what we would refer to as West Knoxville. So at this exit, on the other side of Pellissippi that way, we're headed towards Farragate Concord. And on this side, we're headed towards Cedar Bluff Ebenezer. So. We're gonna um, go check out all of that. Look at some different neighborhoods. But just to show you, this North Shore exit, across the way, across Pellissippi, there is a Target. There is like this super cool neighborhood. I'm gonna show you, it's really cool. It's like, feels like you're in like Charleston. It's really cute. Um, and then back that way, like if we were to go um, even further south on this side of North Shore, like towards the river. So the river is kind of back behind those trees. So that's where you're gonna find multi-million dollar properties, waterfront properties. Meanwhile, we're gonna to head towards Cedar Bluff and also see um, there's Getty's View Golf Course, there's Bennington, which is like a super quaint subdivision. And what's interesting about that is you'll have houses from 400,000 to 2 million, depending on location, but probably the, the least uh, you're gonna pay probably in this area is about 400,000 and that pretty much goes for the majority of West Knoxville unless it's a fixer-upper so um, yeah let's drive around let's check out more of West Knoxville all right so we are driving on North Shore um, this is just for context this is a Saturday morning 
in October so it is game day but the game is not until 7 o'clock tonight so you can see North Shore we do have some like boutique restaurants type of stuff and then there's an F45 like boutique gym there's also a, a pure bar at this exit so this is kind of similar to Bearden in that you have some more like boutique type stuff um, and like smaller business um, kind of not you, you don't see like a ton of chain stuff you see kind of more niche um, and then if I were to turn for example right here this would be headed towards it's Keller Bend um, gorgeous waterfront really nice properties there's a marina back there I mean just really really nice properties. so you're getting into this is 37922 so quite expensive or high ticket houses I should say and then if again if we go straight to North Shore if we head down this road that would take us back towards paper mill where we were looking at kind of the beginning of West Knoxville so we're gonna turn uh, left here and we are going to just check out Cedar Bluff check out Ebenezer so Ebenezer runs from Cedar Bluff back to North Shore. Um, this area is kind of what we call bluegrass. Uh, it's a nice area, well loved um, by many, and it's super convenient because you are not necessarily in the traffic. You're not in the traffic of Farragut. You are convenient to Cedar Bluff and um, not too far from downtown. And this is also uh, gonna be county taxes. So bluegrass. I'm going to show you kind of um, the kind of an area, a neighborhood that people really love in this area off Ebenezer and Cedar Bluff. Um, again, price points about 400000 all the way up to, I mean, the sky's the limit. But for a traditional two-story, 2,500 square feet that's somewhat updated, you're going to be looking at probably 450 to even 500 depending on the age so notice that um, we are approaching a school called bluegrass it's a well-loved school and that's why we call this community the bluegrass community because of the elementary school the middle school here is west valley middle and then these these are all going to route to bearden high school everything we're seeing right now so there's bluegrass um super cute we're going to kind of take the back entrance into a neighborhood called bennington because i wanted to show you what um you can see in this area and this is um, a really cool neighborhood because um, it's to me I love it because you could walk for miles and I just want to walk like go outside and walk out of my front door so you can see these are traditional two-story homes and this part of Bennington is the newer section there's an, a sec an older section these are like 2000s builds late 90s um, so yeah, really cute neighborhood. Um, I want to point out that like you see street cars here, which I didn't even know was a thing, but I have a friend that grew up in Farragut and she's like, no street cars in Farragut, um, which I think is funny because I never even like knew that. Um, but anyways, if you're anti street car, then you got to go to Farragut. <laughs> um, all right. So this is just kind of what you can find for now these that we're looking at. This is about 500,000, um, these newer ones. And then we're gonna get into some of the older sections. So you, you can tell now, see like if you're looking at these houses on this end a little bit older, but we can walk, you could walk literally for miles and miles through this neighborhood. Super nice. And the fall colors are gorgeous. So just lots of two stories, not really ranchers in this neighborhood. And quite a bit of one car garages in this neighborhood. I don't know what's up with that. So there's people walking. Hello, Ooh, a yard sale. I wonder if they have any good finds. I feel like Gary V would be telling me to stop. Just stop. Glad right and listen. All right, this is Bennington. 400,000 and up in here. Um, yeah. Okay, so we are on Ebenezer, which is a major road from Kingston Pike back to North Shore. So uh, basically off Ebenezer, we have Bluegrass Elementary. This is kind of a major cut through from like the south 
side of West Knoxville over to Cedar Bluff area. So also behind me, this this whole thing is new, which I love, but K Brew is on the corner and I'm telling you, best pumpkin spice latte ever of all time. They have amazing coffee, but also they have awesome bagel sandwiches. So definitely a place to check out. I also want to point out, so behind me, um, we have $400,000 houses back there, but then on this side, there is Getty's View Golf Course, and those houses could range up and up and up, up and up and up. So this is just a small little section of West Knoxville I wanted to show you. All right, we are making our way towards Cedar Bluff, which is my most hated area in terms of traffic. However, people love it. Um, so just so you can see nice apartments here, you're gonna be paying about probably two grand a month minimum, 1800 maybe for a one bedroom. Um, so, you know, uh, that's fine. Uh, but just in terms of like rent, West Knoxville is gonna be your most expensive place to rent somewhere. That's faux show. I'm gonna take you to see Getty's View, which is the golf course uh, it's not the only golf course in West Knoxville. There's one in Concord. Um, but this to me would is like probably the nicest. There's also like a smaller golf course off Shod Road, like back in Carnes. But I think if you were gonna, like if you were a true golfer, you'd come to Getty's View. So again, as I'm recording this, this is a Saturday. This is a game day. And I only reference that because it's probably a bit more traffic than normal, but like the game is not until seven o'clock tonight. So um, we would see probably some more if this were like a noon game or even a three or four o'clock game. So we're coming into Getty's View now. There are a little, um, there's some offices down here. I think there's a little gym down here and like a dry cleaners or whatever. So this is the bottom of Getty's View. These townhouses coming up on the right, these currently right now, there's one listed for sale at like 1.2. They're actually huge. They're about 3,500 square feet. Um, I love a good, I love a good townhouse. So this is the bottom of the golf course, as you can see. So super nice, really, just really good area. So most of these houses are early 2000s. For the most part, not a ton of new construction with the exception of those uh, townhouses we just passed by. So um, not the hugest of yards big houses, million dollar properties, some with pools. There is a um, like clubhouse with a gym and a restaurant and a bar. Um, it's also an event space. I've actually been to my sister's cheerleading banquet there before, back in the day. So you can see super nice houses, um, really big houses. This is a mix between brick, stucco, stone that you're gonna see here. Um, and then also the top of Getty's view, if I show you to the left, um, you've got awesome mountain views um, going that way. Oh, look at that helmet. I love that. Well, Tennessee decoration. So this is Getty's view golf course and neighborhood. Really nice. We'll get to the top and I'll show you the um, the clubhouse so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Golf course crossing. There are some condos down there that are attached. Um, those are going to run you about 500,000 roughly. Just so you know, here's the clubhouse there. And then we have Mountain View. So like I said, gorgeous. So good. Also want to point out for you, we are, um, on Westland right now, Getty's view over there. Notice the sidewalk. So we don't have a ton of sidewalks. This is a rare occurrence, but um, something that you're gonna see more often in West Knoxville. If you're gonna see sidewalks, it's gonna be in the West Knoxville area. Um, these sidewalks kinda run from neighborhood to neighborhood. Um, and then again, that's the golf course over there, Getty's view, now that we're, well, you can only see trees, but just wanna point out the sidewalks. This is a rare occurrence. All right, we are coming up on Cedar Bluff. Straight ahead, if you look closely, you can see the interstate, I-40. Um, to the left of me right now is West Valley Middle School. To the right, that would be heading towards Bearden. 
So, like I said, Cedar Bluff is like my most hated area for traffic. And I'm going to show you why here in a second. But, um, I mean, you can see, like, we're, I feel like we're entering the crazy den because it is super congested. So, straight ahead, you see Best Buy, you see Lowe's, you see, um, there's Office Depot, there's Panera, there's all kinds of shops straight ahead. Bradley's Chocolate, shout out if you're a chocolate person. You gotta go to Bradley's because it's so good. But I'm gonna brave this Cedar Bluff traffic so I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. We're at Cedar Bluff. I know I keep talking about this probably in every freaking video that I do, but I hate this part of Knoxville when it comes to traffic. The fun fact about Cedar Bluff is it runs kind of parallel to Pellissippi, north to south. It's probably maybe two miles long. So where we are right now is Cedar Springs area. And we call it Cedar Springs area because actually behind me is Cedar Springs Presbyterian. And it is a, it's Presbyterian, right? Yeah, it is Presbyterian. I couldn't remember. Okay, so that is a popular church in the area. It's a big church and it, they also do a preschool and stuff like that. So where we are is Cedar Bluff and Kingston Pike. So major intersection. And this is just true West Knox, what you're gonna find in West Knox. So there's chains, there's some boutiques, there's food. Um, everything right now where we're at is Joan Bearden High School. Um, and then you'll see that there's a Kroger Marketplace here that is like the big grocery store in the area. And then if we were to go all the way down Cedar Bluff to like the going towards Hardin Valley on the opposite side of West Knoxville, there's also a Kroger. So someone is currently yelling at me and I'm acting as if I cannot hear him because I don't want to deal with that. So basically, traffic. <laughs> Just as I thought, traffic. Okay, so you can tell I-40 is way back there and sometimes you will get off 40 and you're gonna go Kingston Pike, north to south, or sorry, east to west to avoid this, but Cedar Bluff, lots of stuff. Right, so like I said, if we think about West Knoxville in terms of four areas, Bearden, well, if we anchor it based on the high schools, Bearden High School, Carnes High School, Farragut High School, and Hardin Valley. So we are standing right now, this is one of the entrances of Bearden High School, right there, you see the sign, and it is back that way. And what you're gonna notice is, first of all, it's right off Kingston Pike, and you're also gonna notice that there's a lot going on. So restaurants, shops, Sam's Club is back there, Walmart is back there. Um, probably in the Bearden area, your cheapest price point around $350, but more for $450 and up. So we also have Rocky Hill back back behind Bearden. I'll take you over there, but just for context, just to kind of see, this is one part of the West Knox area, Bearden High School. Lots of stuff going on. This is a Saturday morning, and this is probably typical traffic for a Saturday. Um, so people are out and about. It's about 11 o'clock. Um, it is a game day, so we have a bit more traffic but overall you can see that there's a lot going on it is an, a congested area and it is an area that has quite a bit of like shops restaurants stores okay behind me is west town mall this is like the original og of shopping in west knox but we have turkey creek now but if you can imagine back in the day like this is called west town so this was the west part of knoxville um it's since it kind of exploded but um, also, if you're wondering where the Target is, it's like straight down that road. Also, the VA hospital, straight down that road. So, as you can see, West Town, we've got Dillard's, we got Belk, we have all kinds of stores. That Vix is actually new. And then behind those trees over there is actually a Tesla dealership. And then also notice that on either side of where I am is West Hills. So, technically, the houses back there are West Hills. And the houses on the other side of the interstate on I-40... So that is I-40 and Kingston Pike. They run parallel. And back behind I-40, that is also West Hills, which is, I always think of it as like where Chip and Joanna Gaines would buy. So you want the cheapest house in the best neighborhood. So West Town Mall, OG. Again, you can tell lots of congestion. This is why my husband says he hates West Knoxville because he doesn't like the traffic. I love West Knoxville because there's everything to do here. Okay, so we are driving through the parking lot of West Town Mall. Just wanted to show you a little closer up view. The sticks is brand new. Um, Josh Dobbs, Alma Kamara came, and Carrie Underwood came. There's Dillard's there. Um, 
so obviously at Christmas time, which we're approaching the holiday season as I make this video, this gets crazy. Tesla dealership over there. Bulk. There is also what we call a Cinnabar. I don't know if you can see that over there, but it is a, um, a, uh, movie theater. Hello, Tesla. Um, so yeah, this is the mall. On the other side, you have Cheesecake Factory. You've got, um, Loco Burro, which is a new Mexican restaurant, but yeah, West Town Mall, the original kind of place to go shopping in the West Hills Bearden area. And yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty nice. So we are approaching Westmoreland and um, Westmoreland is the place where during trick or treating, if you want full size candy bars, you come to Westmoreland. Um, these, this is like uh, kind of the, I mean, this was almost like the, the, I feel like big, like what, as a kid, like you thought like, wow these houses are amazing, which they are super nice. Um, so this is Westmoreland. These are late nineties, 2000 builds for the most part, big yards. Um, you do have, you know, it's, they're starting to get dated a little bit, but maybe even nineties because I just remember as a kid thinking like, wow, it's so nice. Um, so just, you can just kind of see really nice yards love the fall colors lots of bricks some stucco um lots of like u-shaped uh driveways in westmoreland never noticed that again if you want full-size candy bars this is where you come you come to westmoreland really nice um no sidewalks here as you'll notice but obviously lots of people walking really great neighborhood um, definitely like this is going to be a lower price point than very but, but just, but just as nice. So you're going to get more like square footage here than for like a less price than you would in Farragut. This is still, we're still beard and zoned. Um, so yeah, Georgia fans get out of here with that. Get out of here with that. Just kidding. We accept all the fans, all the fans everywhere, even though I'm wearing orange. So we're sitting in uh, Westmoreland Estates, Westmoreland neighborhood, and prices here are going to run you anywhere from 700000 and up. There is one coming soon listing as I make this video, and it's a 1.2, but it's 4,500 square feet, and it is newer relatively compared to some of the other houses in the neighborhood, but seven, 800000 minimum for Westmoreland. Okay, so just past Westmoreland, we have Rocky Hill. Well, Rocky Hill, technically, I mean, they're like one and the same. But when, we, when you say Westmoreland, you're thinking like big, giant houses, new luxury. When you're thinking Rocky Hill, you're thinking like quaint neighborhood, smaller houses, 1950s, 60s, 70s builds, ranchers, basement ranchers. So you can kind of see like all of these are Westmoreland, Rocky Hill are kind of one and the same. But Rocky Hill, like I said, the older homes... Um, and this is like one of the beloved Knoxville areas, purely for the most part residential. I'm going to show you the Rocky Hill like shopping center. Um, so you can just see that and yeah, let's go take a look. All right. So Rocky Hill, super cute, super quaint little area. Butler and Bailey is like their little supermarket here. It's really cute. And you've got roosters, which is late night and then chicken chicken fingers but roosters people can smoke in there so i don't go in there that often we used to go in high school quite a bit scramble jake's over here that is like huge brunch place if you want to wait two hours it is very good but you better get on that waiting list it's over there on the left um and yeah so this is rocky hill it is more of like i don't want to say bougie but it's like a little its own little kind of community um the elementary school is beloved here. Um, you can just tell Little Shops Thrive is a really cool boutique um, gym. Really fun. Richie Creams. That's the same people that do Myrtle's Bake Shop. You've got some gas stations. Just past this gas station, you've got a little clothing boutique. So 
I'm not gonna hit him. So Rocky Hill, that's what it looks like. Okay, so we are entering into West Hills. We're gonna go un under the interstate here. And um, now technically West Hills is also like across from West Town Mall, but West Hills proper, um, you can see, you can see the sign. It's a green sign on the right. And we're gonna just take a turn through here and just kind of check out what you can find. Now West Hills, these houses are 70s builds, 60s builds. You've got a combination of ranchers, split foyers, basement ranchers, um, just, you know, super, they are really cute houses. Um, but, uh, bigger yards. So we have that and definitely more established. Now for, for a nice basement rancher here, you're going to be, that's been updated, renovated. You're looking at about five to $600,000. Um, this area is highly desired, super quaint. West Hills Elementary down here on the right. Really cute. Really told street. So West Hills, I mean, you can tell just from this stop sign that these are established homes, well cared for homes. They are older homes. Um, so when you can snag one, they are a great investment. This house actually I used to name you the people that lived in there. And since then they've spent a lot of money. The people have moved out. But um, again, you're going to be looking at a distressed property in West Hills. Minimum 300. Totally updated. Five to six hundred thousand dollars. Maybe more depending on the square footage. Um, it's a really nice area. Highly desired. And... Um, yeah, West Hills. Uh, just people love it. People freaking love it, including myself. This is Middlebrook Pike, which I just want to point out to you. Just in the span of, you know, 15 years, 20 years, this used to be a two lane road. And now it's like a major thoroughfare. So, Kings, I mean, Middlebrook Pike um definitely has shifted we are going to um Carnes at this point so we're on the kind of the more country side of west knoxville if you could say near robinson road walker springs right now where we are this is all either hardin valley or bearden zoned which most of this probably now to the back side is actually hard and valley but just wanted to show you that this road middlebrook pike used to be two lanes and now we're looking at four and that's just happened literally within you know the past 15 20 years we are on chirp pit at this point and um just want to point out you can tell probably a difference between obviously where we were rocky hill westmoreland this is going to be a um lower price point so some 300s 350s and then as we get further back so all the stuff we're looking at is 90s 70s builds um and you're going to see that actually we're going to start running into new construction because this is you know is kind of um has become more developed over the years so these houses have been here for quite some time but you can just tell, you know, this is not, this is a little bit different vibe than, for example, Rocky Hill. And we're also just like less accessible to some places the further back we get. Um, so this is just, we're driving Chirp Pit going towards Carnes right now. And this would technically, I still think of this as like Cedar Bluff area, but, um, you know, we are kind of fast approaching the Carnes area. 37931.
All right. So as I mentioned, if we think about, as I mentioned, if we think about West Knoxville in terms of the four major high schools, Bearden, Carnes, Hardin Valley, and Farragut, we are now at Carnes High School. And just think about the difference between what Bearden High outside of Bearden was like versus Carnes. We, it's definitely like back there's not shopping there is some industry type stuff um but you can tell there this is a complete different area we're further back we're less accessible to major stores we're probably about 15 minutes away from bearden high school um but where it definitely feels more country if you will so Carnes high school definitely a vast difference and i just want to point out when you think about the Carnes area you're going to have a similar idea whereas the bearden area more shopping more traffic etc Carnes area more space bigger yards you know just more openness in terms of land itself and just less congestion so Carnes versus Bearden we'll head over to Hardin Valley and Farragut as well fast well we're on we're on Middlebrook slash Hardin Valley so we're still in Carnes but this road itself is called Hardin Valley again not that long ago this was a two-lane street uh, and now it's kind of a major road uh, so this is the Carnes area you can tell this is a vast difference again between Bearden um, it's just there's less out here there's less to do less shopping less everything just primarily residential and everything from like 1970s to new construction in the Carnes area um, you have some high price points but for the most part Carnes is going to be your the most value in terms of what you're buying for square footage Carnes area okay so Hardin Valley this is all new I also want to point out this road right here. This is Hardin Valley. We were four lanes on the other side of Pellissippi and now we are down to two. So I just want to point that out because Hardin Valley has seen a massive explosion, tons of new construction, yet there's kind of one way in, one way out. Um, and like you can even tell from this, this shopping center, this is probably about three or four years old. So definitely tons of growth. Lots of new construction out here. Not a ton of like options, but you are within 10 minutes, roughly, of Turkey Creek, Farragut area. Okay, so this is the Laurel Ridge community um, neighborhood in Hardin Valley. I'm just showing this so you can kind of see. Uh, this is typical Hardin Valley new construction. Houses super close to each other. Um, the majority of these houses are around 3,000 square feet. They're gonna be six, 650. 700 depending on options etc um, but this is kind of a typical look at a Hardin Valley new construction neighborhood all the trees um, you know down and uh, yeah that's pretty pretty typical there it, they are you know still building um, like this house for example this is a two-story and it's listed at 659 I believe so um, yeah that is uh, yeah, Hardin Valley. This is Hardin Valley. It may look similar to Carnes in the sense that like there's less around. However, if you look closely, you're gonna notice some things. First of all, it's huge, which Carnes is big too, but this road. So Hardin Valley is right off Hardin Valley, the road. And you've got tons of new construction and you've got tons of untapped land. Now, Hardin Valley has kind of exploded. And if you look closely way back over there, you're gonna see houses built around the 2000s, which is kind of when this area started to explode. So this is definitely up and coming. This is, to me, in my mind, the alternative to people that wanna live in Farragut. You come to Hardin Valley because we're literally on the opposite side of I-40. Um, so yes, it's definitely got a more rural vibe, but back behind all these trees, our houses um one grocery store here in food city it's literally like just past that light you can almost see it if you zoom in really closely the middle school elementary and high school are all right here so Harnham valley can have some traffic when it comes to school days because 
they're all off the same road. So anyways, that's Hardin Valley. Definitely up and coming. If you're thinking you want to live here, you're probably going to be looking at 600,000 and up. I did have a client that recently purchased for 430, but that was a 2000s build, smaller square footage. So it's possible to get in here in the fours, but if you're, but it's not likely. Uh, I mean, I guess it's possible. There's like one neighborhood here. I feel, I feel that you could really do that. Everything else is pretty much new construction and um, a higher price point. So Hardin Valley. So more of Hardin Valley here. Elementary school is down to the right. Um, and then we're coming up on like the sole grocery store uh, for Hardin Valley, but we are very close to Farragut. So if you were to keep going, if we were to keep going straight on this road, what we're gonna find is like farmland and new construction houses, high price points. Um, I mean, higher than our average, right? So 600,000 and up for that new construction. Um, so yeah, now we are going to head on to Campbell Station. So that's this road right here. And this is the road that takes us kind of the back way from Hardin Valley into Farragut. So this is still um, Hardin Valley. I'm gonna show you one more kind of new construction neighborhood. And um, you can also see that, you know, as we're driving, we're gonna see houses of kind of all ages. This is a little bit reminiscent of Carnes. However, um, again, just a higher price point, more desired because of Hardin Valley Academy. So we're coming up on the backside of a new construction neighborhood and houses in here thinking, you're gonna wanna be thinking around 700,000. So we'll just turn in here real quick and just kind of check it out. Super nice, oversized, large houses. Um, most lots not necessarily huge, but um, the houses themselves, big square footage. So these are 2018 builds. Um, you know, you can just tell like very nice neighborhood. Uh, obviously new construction. Again, they are kind of on top of each other in that sense, but that's what you're going to find with pretty much all new construction anywhere. Um, unless you do a custom build or like even with the R. Horton, unless you just luck up and you get a really nice lot on a corner, you're going to be looking at smaller lots. And notice that these, like this is a, a relatively hilly neighborhood, which is pretty typical, especially for Carnes and Harden Valley. Um, you do see kind of more flat stuff in the, I don't even know if flat is correct. It's less rolling, like West Hills, for example, less rolling. Um, but like that house, can you tell that it's literally like built into steepness? So, okay, so this is Campbell Station. Campbell Station is a big exit. It's almost the last exit before kind of the end of Farragut. There's one more past it, but I think of Campbell Station as like out there, out there, out there. So again, some more new construction kind of on the fringes. You can tell that this is not flat terrain. Um, sometimes people are surprised by that, but we are like in the mountains, it's East Tennessee. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're thinking about, you know, what you're wanting. And if you really want flat land, maybe this isn't the place. Just saying, just saying, no offense. Isn't it pretty though, the fall colors? This may feel like super rural, we're actually really not. We are coming into the heart of like, Farragut, so. If I were to take a right here, that would be going towards Melton Hill, the lake. So there's some waterfront properties um, to the right that could be, you know, a million dollars and up. But you also see that you have like a split foyer here. Um, so distressed property here is gonna run you about 350, depending, like that guy, probably about 350. Um, if it were updated, you're talking about 500 or more for these older homes. Um, and then obviously with the new construction, that's gonna be a lot higher. Um, so yeah, we are fast approaching Farragut. We know we're in Farragut because Farragut, there will be little signs that say Farragut Incorporated. So I'll try to point that out to you as we approach. But notice that like to my left is 
a big mountain or a hill or whatever you want to call it and then it, we're just kind of we're not on the side of a cliff but you know we're kind of in the middle of a hill just reiterating the fact that you know you know we are not flat here we don't like it flat so we are approaching Farragut and we can tell we're approaching Farragut because you see this little sign to the right it says welcome to now um we have all kinds of price points in Farragut from 300 to millions um 300s are going to not be new construction they're going to be like a 1970s split foyer something like that um you know this is kind of the back end of Farragut and we are technically just north of 40 when I think about Hardin Valley versus Farragut I think pretty much everything north of 40 is Hardin Valley which we are still a little bit north of 40 so anyways you can see that there's still land out here um but again we're we're kind of on the north side of Farragut and we have you know just like a wide array of houses and options so now we are approaching I-40 at Campbell Station, big intersection here, and behind me, or sorry, behind the interstate to the left, that is all Turkey Creek Shopping Center. So, um, and it goes an entire, like, from one exit to another on interstate. So Campbell Station Road, now you can see we're back into Hustle Bustle. This is True Farragut. Um, you know, obviously lots of stuff going on. This is a Saturday as I am filming this. So again, you can see where my husband is saying he doesn't like it here because of the traffic. But I love it here because there's so much to do. All right, so we are turning into the famous Turkey Creek. All right. I will say that whoever designed this is like parking wise it's a disaster there's a Publix over there um, first watch on the other side of Turkey Creek is a Walmart you're gonna see that but lots of shops from boutique to chain so like just ahead of me on the right is um, a JC Penney's but then we also have a shop here called fabric um, and Lulu's Lulu's what's it called but the majority of stuff in here that you're going to find is like a small chain, a little more boutique type stuff. I always come out here to, um, there is, there's, um, a running store and it's where I buy my running shoes. Always, they're consistently always good and they will properly fit you for a good running shoe and like map your foot and all that. And they always do a good job. They're super consistent, consistent. And I feel like the people in there know what they're talking about. Um, so yeah, you can see shopping. There's the JC Pennies I was talking about. Fleet Feet. Shout out to Fleet Feet. It's over there. Um, they do the best job of fitting your feet, in my personal opinion. So, again, shopping. I don't know if you can tell far in the distance. You can see the fences for uh, Top Golf. Super excited that we have a Top Golf. At home, it's like this huge home store. It's to the left. So, this is Turkey Creek. And. I come here, mm, I don't know, maybe once a month, I don't know. When you come here, I feel like you have to have time because I want to go to like all the places. Um, so you've got food, you've got, I mean, just basically, it's all an outside mall that's huge. You need your car or a bike because I want to go to like Target and I want to go to Ulta and I want to go to... Apparently, there's a new J. Crew outlet in here, which I've not seen yet. There's a world market in here. So, uh, shout out to Calhoun, Smoky Mountain Brewery. Those are owned by the same people. Um, I've noticed that a lot of my people that come to visit, they go to Calhoun's because they want to try the barbecue. And it is, you know, like a local chain, which is pretty cool. So, there's also the world market to the left. Huge movie theater there. That's one of our biggest in town. And then, randomly in Turkey Creek, there's a CarMax, and that's to the left. 
and then we're coming up to the kind of uh, more traffic side of Turkey Creek because people coming in from Level Road, but this is where there's Target, Chick fil A, World Mart, or no, sorry, um, Earth Fair. So this is all still Turkey Creek. You can see that Target. Now, I hate that Target because they. They renovated it and the whole floor plan is like I don't even know how to find stuff in there so not a fan of you Target even though I love you don't be mad okay look at that this is the Costco it's literally insane and I thought I was gonna go in here and get a smoothie but it's like I don't even know if that's gonna happen there's zero parking in there so this is a hallmark of the Farragut area this is the Costco parking lot this is a Saturday. You should never come here on a Saturday. This is, uh, I mean, it's bananas. There's cars everywhere. There's nowhere to park. I am not even going to venture out to get out of my car because it's crazy. But Costco, when you think about Farragut, you think about Costco because this is the only place where you can get the Costco. All right, we are at Farragut High School. I know it doesn't look like it, but again, when you're thinking West Knox, think about how and where the high schools are located. So Farragut High School and Middle School are just down that road. And what's around me is a ton of shopping, a ton of like hustle bustle, restaurants, whatever. So Kingston Pike is right there. And Farragut High School is literally right in the middle of all that. So if you're thinking about stuff to do, places to go, access to shopping, food, everything, Farragut. Um, so yeah, literally Farragut High School, right back there past that green roof. So what we've seen is that, yeah, Bearden kind of in a similar setting. Carnes feels way out there, similar to like how it is residentially. Hiram Valley, up and coming, and then Farragut well established with tons of stuff around, stuff to do, places to eat and all that jazz. So just like everywhere else we've seen, Farragut has all kinds of housing options, although um, it's actually not the highest price point. 37922, 37919 are more expensive. 37934 is the Farragut zip code. And yes, you are gonna pay more, but you can even see like houses on the left, you have older and established, and then, you know, uh, I'm going to take you up Farragut Hills Boulevard so you can kind of get an idea. It's kind of Westmoreland-esque, like what we saw in the Bearden part of West Knoxville. So this is Concord Hills. It's on, the road itself is called Farragut Hills Boulevard. And this is another place, random, random side note, that is great for trick-or-treating, although it is extremely hilly back here. So what we are seeing is these are anywhere from 1960s 70s builds um to there's not there's not new construction in here but these are older homes established this is an established neighborhood oversized lots oversized houses um i wouldn't necessarily say oversized and like storage as an example i mean new construction yeah you're gonna have oversized closet and stuff like that but just wanted to give you an idea of this is you know, one of the older neighborhoods in Farragut, there's another neighborhood called Village Green, which is similar to uh, Concord Hills, Farragut Hills Boulevard area, just older homes, more established, well cared for, larger yards, um, and definitely like if you wanna walk, this would be a great neighborhood because you got tons of hills, so you're gonna get your cardio on. And then, you know, some of these houses have awesome views, like you're literally at the top of a hill, we're coming up on that now. If you look straight ahead, you can see that there's the Smoky Mountains. It's probably hard to see through the camera, but um, you know, again, not new construction, but established for sure. We are in the back far, or approaching, I should say, the very end of Knox County, Farragut, etc. So kind of back in Concord. You're going to see the water here in a minute. Um, this is kind of all new because like past 10 years ish, roughly, like we're going to see maybe a couple bigger lots or a little bit more established. But for the most part, what we're going to see here is 
new construction we're gonna see like there's the water there so there's a marina up here there's a golf course little i think it's actually a part three golf course um but we are certainly at the kind of far end of Farragut, far end of the Knox County line. A lot of people moving here because they want the Farragut schools. They want West Knoxville um, and they want new construction. So you can tell like we're crossing over Fort Loudon. We're crossing over the river, the lake, um, parks, etc. So there is a YMCA gym out here. Not like a big box gym. There's not really one of those. Probably the next closest big box gym would be the Gold's Gym across from the Costco. But there's a YMCA out here. Um, and we're going to actually go into one of these neighborhoods. So I can kind of show you that even within a neighborhood itself, you're going to see a very wide range of prices. Whether or not a house is on the water. So you can see like behind these trees, new houses this side old houses so we're coming up on the chodo area and again this is like the last corner the last little part of knoxville and the farragut area and this actually chodo is kind of a new newer at least within the past four or five years um for sure this used to be nothing and now there's a Mexican restaurant and there's a pizza place. There's a wine bar. So this is Chodo. Definitely like Farragut and the back end of Farragut as we know it. And then I want to show you. See all those houses? So that's like they crammed them in right on the county line. So we are in the far end of Farragut. The, we're at Chodo. And what's behind me is a shopping center. You've got a drugstore, you got pizza, you got a Mexican restaurant. There's a Weigel's over there. But look behind me, directly behind me. Do you see all that? So that is pretty characteristic of the Chodo area. Newer houses, newer neighborhoods, smaller yards, um, and price points ranging from 600,000 and up, depending on what exactly. There is some waterfront property, like for example, in Mo Montgomery Cove is a neighborhood here and you might find a house off the water for 600 and a house on the water for 1.5 just depending or more depending on what it is so this is the very far end and actually like just over that hill is the Loudoun County line so um, you will see some people they will go pretty much as far as they can because they want to be in the Farragut area they still want to be in Knox County schools but what has actually that has actually caused the explosion of the Chodo area because it's still Farragut and you're still relatively close to Farragut shopping and you've got the Farragut schools. So that's Chodo. We're in the far, far end of West Knoxville and it's a great place. Don Gallo Mexican restaurant, pretty good. All right, so this is Montgomery Cove. You do have some waterfront properties here and then you have um, not. So these houses are gonna range 800,000 and higher depending to super nice neighborhood really nice houses oversized houses awesome square footage I mean just really really nice so these are waterfront properties here so um, these are gonna be you know million plus houses whereas stuff not on the water you're gonna get for you know 800 depending on square footage there is like a newer section of this that is not as close to the water those are you know 600s but um you know obviously the waterfront stuff is gonna run you a bit higher so this is montgomery cove um you know really nice farragut neighborhood newer this is not new construction these are probably about 10 years old um roughly so we are driving on the back side of Farragut. This is like Concord. When I think about Concord, I think about water. You can see to my right is a bunch of water. Um, that to me would characterize Concord, even though, I mean, to me, Farragut, Concord are one and the same. Um, so yeah, you can see that, you know, we're driving right along the water. I'm currently on North Shore Drive and it, 
here's Concord Park. It's a public um, kind of park, boat ramp, Lakeside Tavern, Concord Marina here. So this is, you know, all of Farragut Concord area. There's a part, I think this is, a, yeah, it's part of three golf course, um, Concord Park. There's also a Frisbee golf um, park up here I will show you. Um, and then if you see this little yellow sign of this walker, so parts of Farragut, you have kind of this walkway system through Farragut neighborhoods, which I think is pretty cool. And you can see, you know, there's neighborhoods to the left and to the right. A lot of 90s to 2000s construction for sure. Um, if we were to turn left here, we'd be going back towards Cedar Bluff. Um, Westland area, AL Lots, West Valley. Um, so again, you know, on either side of me, you're seeing, you know, new construction or newer, not new construction. What am I talking about? You're seeing established houses, late nineties, early two thousands. And then the newer stuff is going to be out past Chodo where we looked at that stuff. That is the Frisbee golf course right there. And I'm not a very great Frisbee golfer, but my husband loves it. So we are, there's more water, little Lake Loudoun, slash Tennessee River, some little pockets of waterfront properties here, and then, but really more traditional, like, neighborhoods in this area. In the West Knox area off North Shore, we are, I don't know if I would call this Farragut, I really, I just call this North Shore. Um, but you have little boutique restaurants here, super cute. Um, there's a really good Mexican restaurant down here. It's really good. It's called Soccer Taco. And, um, you know, just cute, cute stuff. I want to show you my favorite West Knox neighborhood. Like, it's my, actually not my favorite West Knox. It's my favorite Knoxville neighborhood. Let's go check it out. Although I will say, just imagine the traffic here because there's an elementary school right here. North Shore Elementary, it's a, one of the newer elementaries. And just imagine on the school day how the traffic is. All right, so this is my favorite neighborhood in Knoxville, pretty much all together. I love these houses. I think they're so cool. And you could walk to Target from here. You could walk to the grocery store. I literally love them. They give me like Charleston vibes. I mean, I just think they're so pretty. These are 10 years or newer. Some of them super small. Some of them 3,000 or more square feet. Um, just I just love this neighborhood. So good. And these houses... Depending again on square footage, I mean, you could be up to a million, 500,000 and higher typically. Um, but I just love this neighborhood. The only negative is that this is literally right next to Pellissippi Parkway, which means it's loud. It's loud as you know what. Okay. So there are some lots still in here. I just love this neighborhood. I love how clean it is. I think the houses are so cute. And they're all different. They've got character. I mean, you are like right on top of your neighbor. So if you don't want that, you know, that's not a plus. But there's sidewalks. And did I mention you can walk to Target? So, I mean, I'm here for it. I'm here for it all day, every day. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Some of these have great mountain views like off the back. Like these are going to have great mountain views. Um, so yeah, it's my favorite nation. My favorite Knoxville neighborhood. So good. What did you think? Is West Knoxville the right place for you? I will say that there's so much more. I could have gone for hours and hours and hours and shown you all different parts of West Knoxville. So if you have questions, call me, text me, and I'm happy to answer them. I'll see you on the next video.